Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for That 90s Show Part 2 on Netflix. And I know you're like, wait a minute, they went by seasons, now they're going by parts for some reason. Uh, splitting up Season 2 into two parts, 8 episodes now, 8 episodes in October. And the thing is... I would occasionally kind of check to see the news, and then I just one night saw a hey, new episode. I'm like, what the fuck? And uh, since we're now into season two, from what I have seen and gathered from this, I don't really put the blame on the actors that they've got for the younger cast here. Uh, they just, for some reason have a better handle on, like, Red Foreman, Kitty, Bob, and pretty much any of the kind of cameo people that pop up here. Uh, most of this stuff is just kind of boilerplate. E eight episodes is not enough time to do what they kind of need to do for these characters. I mean, that 70s show had, like, 22, 23 episodes sometimes, uh, to kind of do some weird kind of shit with our characters. It also doesn't help that we've essentially got two characters for one character. Uh, Ozzy and Nikki are essentially the Jackie character, though within this season, Ozzy kind of takes up most of the kind of Jackie role, uh, and Nikki is just kind of screwed over, to be honest. And then, of course, we've got Jay as a Kelso, and Nate as another Kelso. It just... It's, it's how they're done and the content that they're given. I... Uh, they do as they do the best job that they can, but they don't really get enough kind of content, enough kind of meat to really kind of go ham and make the characters their own. We're still kind of dealing with the same kind of archetype kind of stuff. Uh, especially you see this with Gwen. Uh, when she's pretty much allowed to kind of stretch and do her own kind of thing outside of the kind of Hyde archetype, it kind of works. But then you have her kind of just spouting off stuff that Hyde would naturally spout. But it's like, oh, it's this point we have to have her talk about uh, the patriarchy, uh, this kind of thing, uh, whatever going on uh, with like her relationship with this cold dude. It's like, okay. And again, I don't mind these things being brought up. It's just it's not really handled that organically, and you don't have enough time to really do it. Uh, like I really wanted to see more of her kind of battling with okay. She wants to be an empowered uh, woman and understand herself in the world. And then she pretty much falls for this hot Abercrombie and Fitch kind of guy. And what that kind of means. But they don't really give her time to deal with that. We also get a thing where Leia and the rest of them, uh, Leia, Gwen, and Nikki decide to steal push-up bras. And we deal with her pretty much getting the only one being arrested and her being black. But the thing is, there's not really enough time to kind of delve into that. We get a little bit of her kind of talking with her mom about it and being like, yeah, but I got to deal with the whole black kind of thing and all the racism and all that. And the mom's trying, but there's not enough time to really kind of go for it. So it's kind of condensed, paced, and fucking just jacked out the door like, ah, shit, because I'm fine with them delving into that, seeing what's going on with that, getting into her head and her character and what she kind of wants to deal with that. But... That's, again, not what the objective is here. And, of course, we don't have enough time in this objective because it's eight, like, 23-minute episodes. Uh, Leia kind of works out well enough. She's the only one that really kind of gets enough where it doesn't feel like a complete rip fusion of Eric and Donna. More siding with the Eric kind of bits where she just doesn't know how to handle shit, and then her kind of daydreams of, like, uh, that 90s Romeo and Juliet kind of shit with Kelso, it's like, oh my god. But we see her come back, uh, we see them have this whole kind of giant blow-up of, it's almost like that Ross and Rachel thing of, we were on a break, except, uh, she's pretty much hiding that her and Nate almost kissed, and it's like, I understand that certain kind of levels of things have different kind of meanings to people where it's like you guys did it and I'm like okay it could be a kind of bigger thing of oh you almost kissed and all that kind of issue and like blowing up 
uh, Nate and Nikki's relationship where they break up, but then they get back together and they have a pregnancy scare. And they are using, like, Kitty's got, like, all these pregnancy tests because of Lori, which, nice name drop for Lori. Um, and then she's not pregnant, and they're still kind of in this weird limbo relationship. It's like, all right. Ozzy, uh, his uh, boyfriend from Canada is supposed to come, Etienne, but he doesn't and breaks up. Uh, they're, like, broken up, and it really kind of sucks. And then he's just pretty much, like getting good with the zingers throughout the rest and for some reason uh uh getting into like an online war with bob pinciotti it's funny because uh uh the foreman's like front door uh kind of neighbors passed away and she was trying to get don and eric to get it but they do bob instead and it's like oh son of a bitch and then red dealing with that whole kind of thing those are the best kind of ones because the actors have the handles on the characters and evidently the writers have the handles on the characters as well. That's where you get the best kind of stuff going on right there. Uh, but other than that, uh, the new kids get fucked. And I don't really blame them. They don't get really any good kind of stuff to deal with. I mean, I'm looking at it and the thing is, what teenagers deal with is pretty much the same throughout various different kind of time periods. Now, granted, they've got different kind of flavors because of different kind of technologies involved, different kind of things going on socio uh, socioeconomically, politically, everything like that. But this is like written like uh, an older person trying to do that without understanding. Teenagers have the same problems we do. It's just differences of scale and reactions to them. And the thing is, you want to make that as organic as possible without it coming off as just completely melodramatic. Everything's kind of the end of the world. There are some teenagers and some adults like that. I have like, I have spilled my milk and now I'm dead. And it's like, I've got some milk you can use, buddy. And you know what I mean? Like that kind of thing where it's like, all right, we got opera over this shit. All right. Uh, but like they were the least interesting kind of aspects, even though we got some interesting kind of before of, oh, fuck, what was his name? Seth Green makes a cameo as the dude uh, that had beef with Eric Foreman and he owns Hot Topic. And he fires Gwen because she's going out with the Abercrombie and Fitch dude because uh, they've made fun of him because he, like, shit himself during a breakdancing thing for some reason. And it's like, okay, Mitch. Duh. Uh, but it's like, all right, uh, Bob coming back in and doing his own stuff. The, uh, the Bob, Red, and Kitty trying to teach Leia to drive was a hilarious and also kind of fucked up, kind of crazy thing to see because we are taught that our elders have wisdom. And yes, there's wisdom. But sometimes you have just lived long enough and you do stupid shit that you shouldn't be doing, like how they're fucking with Leia when she's driving. And it's like, oh my god, what the fuck? Red is not the best teacher. I mean, there are certain kind of skills that you can get him to teach you, but holy fucking shit. Bob talks about some weird ass shit, and Kitty's like flashing like pictures and shit, talking about weird shit, pretty much almost fucking getting laid to roll off the road. It's like, normally, people, do, like, when you're older, you do have a certain amount of greater kind of knowledge, but that doesn't mean you're an expert on everything and watch the fuck out with that shit. So this was a nice kind of one to kind of see that kind of going through. Um, what other stuff that we've got? Uh, we get, uh, Leia and Jay having the kind of fallout with the almost kiss, them trying to figure out their relationship. Jay apologizing to every woman that he pretty much said that he loved. And interestingly enough, the only one out of the kind of younger cast that was kind of interesting was the crazy woman that, uh, kept stalking Kelso. Uh, because she pulled that shit off kind of like the other crazy chick. So, I, I think that they're pretty much done with her, hopefully, but, like, the other one that they would keep introduced, like, yeah, rip your face off kind of shit. I'm like, god damn, lady, what the fuck? And it didn't seem like a one-for-one -one kind of recreation. It's just like, okay, this chick be clinging 
Yeah, it's fucking shit. Um, that's about it with that. Then there's also the whole thing that Red, uh, they get into kind of a spontaneity kind of thing. Uh, Kitty also got hurt and pretty much played up that she, like, punctured her lung. So, like, all these old ladies are, like, bringing casseroles and shit. And they're thinking, oh, yeah, if Red's on the market, they'll be taking her, uh, taking Kitty's place. Uh, and Kitty has this, uh... Uh, dream kind of daydream thing of Carmen Electra making shake and bake for Red, but Red's like, no, I only want you. And then we do the same thing with Kitty, which was actually a pretty good one. And then one of the other cameos we get is uh, Jay and Silent Bob. We get that uh, Red during his spontaneity phase decides to buy tickets to Paris. However, we learn that he's afraid of flying, but Kitty rightfully gives the ultimatum that if we don't do this, I will make your life a living hell. No hot meals, nothing. She, like, it's a complete utter strike freeze out of, like, you will die with, like, horrible fucking shit. Red also had a kind of cardiac moment with what was going on with Jay and uh, Leia. And he, of course, uh, was in the hospital. We get pretty much the guy that was Newman, who also played this kind of guardian angel in that 70s show as well. That was a kind of cool little bit as well. But... They go off to Paris. Uh, they accidentally pretty much let loose throughout the neighborhood that her parents are going to be gone for that amount of time. And then a house party ensues. Uh, we get kind of relationship funkery with uh, uh, Cole and Gwen uh, because he's going off to college a little bit early for football practice. And uh, we learn that Nate is still in love with Nikki as Nikki is singing. And... Leo is retiring, uh, so Leo had a nice little cameo, and then his son is actually uh, Kevin Smith, and his friend uh, Jay is with him. They accidentally crash a car into the foreman's house, and that is where part two ends. Like, the most kind of random-ass fucking spot to end it on. I'm like, uh, Ian needs, like, it's literally ended pretty much in the middle. Red and Kitty have gone off to Paris. Uh, He's pretty much like, I'm not going to deal with that kind of shit, so I'll be afraid to fly, but I'm going to fucking do it. And we get this car crashed into the foreman's kitchen. We are introduced to Leo's son, Sonny, and we'll have to see what kind of goes on from here. I I don't know. Evidently, I looked up, and uh, Donna's actress... Let me see. Laura Propon... Uh, has directed the whole of part three, so it will be interesting to see uh, how that kind of changes things up. I am not aware of anything that I have watched that she has directed, but it will be interesting to see how she works out on that. Uh, this is more enjoyable if you're focusing more on the Elder cast members, uh, because they get the best kind of content and the best kind of explorability of kind of what's going on with them in their lives. Now, granted, that 70s show also did the same thing, where, yes, the main kind of focus was Eric Foreman and his group of friends. However, you would also get really good shit with Red, Kitty, uh, Bob, Leo, and these older kind of castmates as well. However... That had a better balance. This one doesn't. And especially the balance is thrown off when you essentially have two people doing one character. It just completely... You then have to divide content between the two. And sometimes that division of content completely fucks over one or the other. Uh, and you just come up as like, oh, I've got like two of the same characters going on here. That really hits on with... Uh, the Kelsos and the Jackies. Ugh. Like, Nikki is really given fuck all nothing here. I mean, at least they attempted with Gwen, and Leia is the main pretty much focus as our anchor legacy character. But Nikki doesn't get jack shit other than a pregnancy scare and staying with Nate. And it's just like, can we explore her shit? I mean, with the pregnancy scare, she's thinking about her future and what she kind of wants to do, but there's enough time for that shit. Eight fucking episodes? That works in certain other kind of premium ones when it's like an hour long where you've got mm, like 45 minutes to actually delve into certain kind of stuff and focus on maybe each kind of cast member. Here, it's just you can't do a sitcom like this with these characters and just fuck it out at like eight. I mean, granted, it's not the worst thing. But this does not work here. It is 
going to really severely hamper what you're able to do and how you're able to accomplish it if you want to tell any kind of story in that short amount of time. I mean, back when you had like 22 episodes, this could be like the start and end of a certain kind of arc if you're going for it. Now, granted, an eight-episode arc would have been a pretty big fucking commitment even back then with that, but it's like, holy fucking shit, they just... <sighs> it's still not working, and I'm glad I still watched this because I wanted to see how they're able to do certain kind of things. Uh, when you're doing these kind of seasons and shows, sometimes you got to give them about, like, a season or two, depending upon the length of them, to really get that kind of feel of if they knew what the criticism was and if they're able to execute on correcting that criticism. Because sometimes you've got to do that to kind of... It's almost like the three-episode anime rule. Uh, like, I did that with the anime Overlord, uh, which is incidentally also on Netflix. And I just... The setup and premise, I was just like, wow, I'm kind of bored on this. Uh, I think I'm good. I'll go look into some other kind of stuff. So, recommendation-wise, if you are into the elder cast members, you'll definitely get enjoyment out of this one. If you are hoping that the younger cast members get anything kind of better, they really don't. Um, it's pretty much the same on par with the first season. If you were into the first season with the younger cast members, I think you'll do fine and have enjoyment here. And the thing is, it's not the worst thing. It's eight episodes at... 23 some minutes of pop it'll get you through a kind of dry spell if you need like a palate cleanser or whatnot uh, we'll have to see what happens with part three i fucking always question what the fuck netflix is up to with any of this kind of shit if you want to do week to week episodes go for that if you're going to drop episodes on one shot do that though granted please tell us i mean Sometimes the shadow drop works, but sometimes it's like nice to kind of be like, hey, uh, we got Godzilla minus one. It's like, ah, shit, cool. And then randomly out of nowhere, here's uh, that 90s show part two. I'm like, can, can you give me a little bit of like, shit, man. But eh, I enjoyed it. Uh, would I recommend it that you watch it right away? Nah, if you if you need something, go for it. Yeah, you got this. So, those are my opinions on part two. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.